farming is changing. Traditional crops are being replaced by genetically modified ones. It's now estimated that GM crops are being grown on 140 million hectares around the world. That's 10%, 10% of the world's arable land. The question is, are they safe? To my view, we don't do enough testing. Um, I mean, our, our food regulator doesn't actually require any animal testing to be done on a crop before they say that it's safe to eat. Critics say GM is unnatural. You couldn't normally get a potato to have offspring with a fish, but with genetic modification, you can get a gene from the fish and put it into the plant. But how natural is traditional breeding? Not at all. I mean, it's, very, it's been done for 10,000 years, but it's not natural. And many of the crops that we grow commercially have had to have very specific laboratory techniques in order to make the crosses actually work. Greenpeace recently took matters into their own hands. What happened to you on the 14th of July? Well, some activists came across a couple of fences, uh, entered the site with some whipper snippers and cut down one of our GM trials. They chopped everything which had emerged from the ground, all of those crops. It's not something that was undertaken lightly, I'm sure, and it was uh, something that was undertaken as uh, an activity of last resort to draw attention and spark some debate around all of this uh, issue. We decided to put some of the critics' concerns to the scientists. Critics say, for instance, that crops that have had an insecticide gene put in them are unsafe. Cotton and corn, for example. The gene comes from a bacterium known as Bt. It's isolated in the lab. We start off with an extract of DNA from a solution from those uh, bacteria. I'm just going to add some ethanol to that. You can start to see the DNA. The ethanol makes the DNA suddenly visible. Yeah, okay, yeah, so that's, yeah. that's bacterial DNA. That's bacterial DNA. That's what I'm going to be using to isolate the gene from. There's 5,000 of them in there. I, I need to find one. That one gene produces an insecticide when put into a plant. Then when an insect comes along and eats the plant, it will eat the insecticide as well. It goes into the gut of the grub and actually ruptures the gut of the grub, thereby killing it. So these are proteins that are made by the plant and unfortunately you can't wash these proteins off. They are in the plant, they're in every cell of the plant so that then when you eat the crop yourself you're actually eating those proteins as well. The reason why this is so safe for us but still toxic to insects is that the Bt toxin binds to very specific proteins in the gut of the insect that we don't share. It, it's very analogous that um, chocolate can be toxic to dogs but I ate chocolate this morning and loved it, and it's not considered toxic to us. Inserting the insecticide gene is not simple. Genetic engineering may sound precise, but there's still an element of chance involved. Just one in a million of the plant's cells take up the gene. So researchers grow a whole lot of samples under control conditions like this, and then hand pick the successful ones. This picking process is another concern for critics. It involves putting marker genes into plants to make them immune to antibiotics. And antibiotic resistance is becoming a major health issue. But again, we don't have a very clear understanding of the implications of releasing those sort of marker genes more widely into the plant population. It's as simple as that. We don't fully understand what we're doing. The antibiotic resistance genes that have been used, particularly for the antibiotic canamycin, were genes that, for which the resistance is so widespread already in bacteria, they're easily picked up. In fact, if you were to analyze bacteria from your gut or mine, we could probably find canamycin resistance already. It's that common. For the Greenpeace activists, GM wheat is particularly worrying. The CSIRO is trying to make wheat healthier. Well, we're looking at uh, increasing dietary fibre and slowing down the digestion of starch, which is reducing the glycemic index of products made from wheat. In the case of the low GI wheat, what's needed is to knock out one of the genes that's involved in starch synthesis so that we make a better starch in wheat. What worries Judy is that the gene is knocked out with a molecule called interfering RNA there is a risk that the small interfering RNAs may survive digestion, enter the body of people and animals, 
go through the body of those people and actually silence genes in the people and animals that eat the plant. It's important to remember that the genetics of plants is very different than the genetics of animals. The gene silencing to work, the RNA sequence has to be a very close match for the particular gene that we're seeking to silence in plants. Surely healthier food is a noble aim. It's a very good idea to eat low GI diet, absolutely. Um, but there are many ways you can do that already. Um, eat oats, eat rye, um, eat wholemeal wheat. Well, you could eat oats, but the thing about wheat is that wheat is the single largest source of vegetable protein in the human food supply. Wheat is really important because it can be grown economically and it, because it can be stored economically. And as a consequence, it has broad importance across the world. I think we need to actually do some proper uh, safety assessments of these crops by actually feeding them to animals for a long time to see if they actually cause any damage to the animals. So we're talking about toxicological types of approaches here. Does it cause damage to the liver? Does it cause damage to the kidneys? Does it cause damage to your cardiovascular system? When people ask about long-term feeding studies for GM foods, you might well ask, where's the long-term feeding study on, say, chocolate or tea or various other things we eat all the time? And, and the answer is there aren't any. And we know there are potential health risks with these. Um, mushrooms have compounds in them that are carcinogenic and so forth. No safety testing is required on any of those. GM crops are tested more than conventional ones. The World Health Organization has said that food made from GM plants is probably safer than food made from conventional plants because it undergoes so much testing. We need to keep in mind that the company that is making the GM crop to try and make money out of it, they are the people that do the safety assessments. And I think there's a problem in that, as we found with um, tobacco and asbestos industries, etc., and even pharmaceutical industries. You often don't know what the real effects of that might be on someone until independent people do the safety testing. While the debate goes on, CSIRO plans to press ahead and replant their crop next year. <laughs>